Welcome back guys, uh, this is Bioinformatics Practical and we are talking about uh, the cloning and PCR primer designing and all these different uh, important stuff. And in this video especially we will be talking about uh, VEX screen and the importance of using VEX screen while you are uh, selecting your uh, gene of interest for amplification using PCR. Now, what, what is going on in cloning? We all know the basis of cloning, that is you cut uh, the gene sequence of your interest, you cut the section of your vector, then you ligate your gene sequence into the vector, then you amplify it and you get your product. Now, once after getting the product, you need to amplify the product for, for some reason. You, you need your gene again, you just cut it, you amplify it for uh, using PCR. So, for running PCI, you need to have your gene right, right away. But what happens in those cases, uh, your gene is not free in that sense. Your gene is ligated with your vector. So, you need to cut your gene out of your vector and then look for the amplification and, uh, and look for whatever gene you got. So, in those conditions, uh, you need to check whether the gene that you get is having any contamination of vector part or not. And that's very, very important observation because if because vectors are always there, genes are inserted inside the vectors, so it may be possible that during the restriction cleavage or restriction endonuclease uh, cut, it might take some section of uh, your vector with your gene. So it is a kind of mix, it's a contaminant of vector in your gene. So to remove this uh, vector contaminants of the gene, you need to screen your gene sequence for the vector. And that's why you require VEX screen or vector screening application of NCBI. And you'll be going to NCBI and look for the total sequence that you've got. Uh, you, can, you can input the sequence in FASTA format, you can input the accession number directly if it's found in, in NCBI directly. So, these things, using those parts, you need to screen uh, for whether you get the desired uh, gene exactly uh, as you wanted or you get some contaminants. And if you got some contaminant, you need to exclude the part of the contaminants and that uh, graphical representation of NCBI will tell you which is the section need to cut out. So, you'll cut that section out, then again get the actual gene and then amplify it then design a primer for it. Now in this video I'll be talking about how to use VEX screen. In future video we'll be talking about primer designing for amplifying your gene of interest and also uh, checking the compatibility of your primer and the quality of your primer. So let's begin with VEX screen. So simply you start with VEX screen in uh, Google just like that and instant search will provide you just enter into VEX screen and here we go you get uh, NCBI tool for VEX screen. Now it's suggesting that it's a, it's a system that quickly finds segment of nucleic acid sequence that may be of a vector origin, right? It helps researchers identify and remove any segment of vector origin before they analyze or submit the sequence. So as you can see, that's why it's very, very important. So, so it's also another important that, uh, that you shouldn't submit any sequence as a whole gene sequence for a particular protein coding product uh, which is contaminated with vector because it is wrong, right? Because you will misguide other people for that. So for that reason, it's uh, obviously an uh, important thing to check it always. So how to check it? You can put it the accession number, GI or FASTA format sequence. I'll be putting the accession number that is 4099437. This is the accession number I want to put. Just just putting the accession number and click run VEX screen here. It will take you to the page. Yes, that is it. So it finds your your particular query that is a 984 letters long query. Uh, so you can look at the VEX screen. It is also having two different things, UNIVEC and these things are, are, are attached. So you can look for the alignment format or biosec sequence format, whatever you can. You can buy HTML, you can look at via ASN.1 or XML. HTML is the always the better option. So just look at it. You can look for old view if you are, uh, if you are having a, a better compatibility of looking at old uh, days view for NCBI uh, search window. I don't want it. I want new things. So don't un uncheck that. Then you can look at the alignment, you can align it pairwise, you can align pairwise with dot uh, plots uh, for the identities to find identities because you know dot plot is actually helping us to get the identity straight because if two sequences are completely identical we get a particular unique pattern of, uh, of line in the dot plot and if it's not compatible we find some, some kind of difference so that's why dot plot is kind of interesting 
in that sense so you can look at using dot plot or pairwise so let's 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 go for pairwise alignment here only don't, don't not going for dot plot here now character the masking character is lower case it is it is fixed default so so if you don't know anything about the letter part i always recommend you to uh, leave them as they uh, are right because don't fiddle around them if you don't know color is black whatever it's black is always good because it's too it's good to visualize so everything is provided now here if you know the organism that we are checking for then you can put it here but it's not required because accession number can tell everything uh, what is going on right so so that's that's it now here you can set some parameter this is important you can look for you can say the expect minimum and accept expect maximum this is the kind of identity that you want or percent identity minimum percent identity maximum so you can look uh, you can write that percent identity if it's 20 percent identical then include it if it's 20 percent if it's 60 percent identical don't include it so you can you can feed the parameters you can feed it like you, you can say that 40 percent identical and allow them so so then in that case if you if your sequence if your gene sequence is 40 percent identical with the sequence of any vector like Park, park. Usually they they uh, look for common vectors like PAC, PBR, and many different lambda vectors and many different vectors. So in those vectors, they if they will check if if your sequence is having 40% similarity, they will keep up to 40% similarity. But if the sequence is more sim more identical or more than 40% identical, in that case they won't keep it. In that that case they will just release it. But if it is less. So you can put some values here. You can you cannot put some values. So just just check for it without putting any value here. Then we'll be uh, changing this and look for it. So just click show results in new window because it's always good to look for results in new window. So that's kind of it. And just click the view reports and it will take you to the new window and. Uh, it will require some time, very less amount of time, and there you go. It gives you the result, and this is the result. You get uh, the description. The description is Mustela vision GT dinucleotide repeat sequence is there of chromosome number seven. So here we go. Nine eighty four is the query length, and this is the actual thing that 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 we are interested in. The distribution of vector matches with your query. So remind you this whole whole section, this whole picture of this white white chromosome like thing, this is one two nine eighty four is uh, the query sequence. And among this query sequence, this is the stretch, this is a portion, uh, very close to four ninety two. It's like it's kind of like four forty five to five fifty eight. This is a section, this is the region where they find a match with a vector. And not only they find a match, but find a match with a red color that indicates that it is a very very strong match with the vector right so strong match means obviously this section of your gene is uh, having a very strong relation identity with a vector and what vector they find the identity with they find this identity with the vector as you can see here pbr322 this is the vector with which they find the identity and the percent identity they found is 99% so everything you kind of see here and where is the identical uh, region that's also designated in this particular graphical representation in this in this alignment pairwise alignment right that's why we choose pairwise alignment they provide us this if we choose pairwise with dot they would put another dot matrix uh, report to us but this is what we require this is what we need remember any other places are, are not having any similarity and this color coding is kind of telling us an important information that is whether uh, the the identity is weaker that is less identical moderate slightly uh, identical and strong means very much identical right so so that's that's kind of very interesting thing so you click on the strong match it will redirect you to another page and and it will actually tell you what do we mean by strong match to vector it means expect one random match in one lakh queries as you can see that means obviously it's a very very good match right so any time you can look for what is strong match what is uh, less strong moderate match and uh, many things like that right now i remind you one thing is very very important that all not always when you get this kind of matches mean you need to discard your sequence sometimes it may happen that uh, you are cloning a sequence of you are cloning a gene or you are taking a gene which is itself uh, is uh, by random chance a part of uh, 
the gene of a vector because for example if you are uh, cloning a uh, antibiotic resistance gene of a bacteria so that gene obviously is a part of plasmid so definitely uh, it it may have a similarity and it's it's a high degree uh, of or high probability that it may have a similarity with uh, with any kind of vector because because the vectors obviously are plasmids and plasmids carry usually the uh, antibiotic resistance gene so in those cases you, sh you you should not discard the sequence but except for those cases if you get more than one or two matches it's a good idea always to discard it and check for another so always it's not actually discarding uh, this sequence just by looking this results you need to run the experiment and these results are actually helping you it these results are guiding you to to check for whether the experiment you need to repeat the experiments or not and reperform the experiment and whether it may possible that in your lab it's a contamination due to some other primers somebody else is doing uh, or another research with a primer you take it some somehow the contamination occurs from their their primer so these things always occur so their primer and also they are not actually primer but vectors right so different vectors so so these things may result because uh, if you if you don't uh, maintain all these things correctly so that's how this this vectrin is very very important tool to look always before delivering the sequence right so let's check it L let's uncheck it let's uncheck it and let's make it slightly different let's make it a uh, pairwise with uh, dots for identities now let's now also expect minimum uh, so let's like percent identity minimum let's put 20 here as a percent identity and then look for what happens there if we look for 20 percent identity still it resides because we put 20 percent identity that means we, we 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 are just incorporating to the software that if our identity is 20 percent or more then you keep you show us the result if it's 20 percent if it's not 20 percent identical don't show us the result and if it is less than 20 percent identical here they won't show us the result but now we know that the identity is 99 percent so definitely they are showing us the result there and here we go the dot as you can see the dot and analysis so it's not actually so so you can see here here you can see the matches and where it, it does not match so those section is provided here kind of right so 445 to 558 you can see exact matches are there except for only one nucleotide and that is this g with t this is slightly varied but except for that complete matches are shown so it's really really strong identical site and what we can do here let's let's now put 100 percent what what we can see so let's say 100 percent in this case i don't think yeah in this case we can see here that if we put 100% identity as you can see 100% identical sequence is only small stretch sequence as you can see here the 100% identity can only be found in in this places one is 445 to 414 then 416 to 558 remember one nucleotide was there where there wasn't a match so they just exclude that match that's why uh, we check for them we check for always these, these are the section we check for so that's why they just exclude that part and then show us the identical portions but if we don't click here and hundred percent if we just if we just put it just eighty percent although eighty percent still they are going to provide us the complete region and there is the only nucle only one nucleotide due to which the identity goes down to ninety nine otherwise it is hundred percent identical match right so that's why this this these parameters are important vec screen is important to check for what is going on and then uh, you need to decide what you need to do right so that's kind of it guys and i hope that's helpful thank you